Hey everybody, thank you for joining me here today. I'm going to talk about something that's really important to bow hunters. And if you're interested in bow hunting for bear, then there's some really important factors that we need to consider as far as broadhead choice and bow, and we're talking about things like kinetic energy and penetration and things like that. And it sounds really boring, but it's very, very critical, and it actually is not boring at all when you get into the aspect of how we owe it to the bear for a quick, clean kill and a humane kill, and how bears are different than other big game animals. So let's uh, let's talk about some of this uh, important aspects of how bear and deer are different to begin with. And you may be surprised to learn that most people who bow hunt start with the white-tailed deer as their number one bow hunting animal, and the second uh, most often pursued big game animal when deer hunters that are bow hunters go to hunt a different animal uh, the black bear is the number one choice so there's a lot of people out there that are going bear hunting who have hunted for deer and are um, interested in the aspect of how bear and deer are different and what kind of broadheads and uh, bows and things that you need for bear so um Let's really examine the differences between bear and deer for starters, uh, biologically, with, you know, with the uh, um, where their vitals are located, and also their demeanor and attitude and so forth. Um, the bear's vitals will sit a little bit farther back and a little bit lower on the animal's body than a deer does, and uh, the bear's lungs are a little bit smaller than a deer. Now, another thing that's really important to remember that if you're, you know, deer hunting and you got a buck in front of you, there's not much difference in body size from one buck to another. You know, I mean, uh, you might go to Texas where the bucks are 130 pounds, or you might go to Saskatchewan or Alberta where the bucks are 230 pounds. Um, but you know, if you're in most places that you hunt, um, the bucks are about the same size in comparison to a bear where if you're bear hunting you might have a 150 pound bear in front of you or you might have a 500 pound bear in front of you and the the distance that your arrow has to travel through a 500 pound bear is about twice as far as that of a 150 pound bear so you don't know what's going to step out in front of you and you got to pre be prepared for um, you know if a really big bear uh, presents you with a shot so penetration is really really key and bear hunting and uh, having the kinetic energy to drive an arrow all the way through a bear is really really important uh, another thing about deer is that they will um, they're, they're, they're a prey species which is different than a bear which is a predator species so they act differently um, a deer will often uh, react to the sound of the shot they're you know because they're a prey species they're just like on the edge of panic all the time and if a deer is alert and you shoot at the deer with a bow it can drop you know quite a bit between the time the bow goes off and the arrow arrives so you know what they're doing is they're crouching to load their muscles to escape and uh, so a bear has a bear I've never seen a bear do that in all the bears that I've shot and uh, and I've shot 28 myself, and I've also been in on the recovery of a lot more. I've probably had uh, 60 to uh, probably around 60 bears that friends and family have shot that I've been in on, and I've also been in bear camps where I actually uh, helped blood trail and recover bears. Probably all together, uh, bow killed bears. I've been in on the blood trail and recovery, and in a few cases, um, non recovery, uh, probably in the neighborhood of 120 bears. And so, you know, when I tell you this stuff, I just want you to understand that I have some experience and uh, I don't know it all, but I've learned a lot and some of it from my own mistakes. So uh, a, a bear won't react to an arrow that way. And a bear will, after he gets shot, will react a lot differently than a deer. Typically when an arrow zips through a deer's lungs or heart, that deer just runs until it dies. And it may run for 10, 15 seconds and then just fall over dead because its brain ran out of oxygen well in that amount of time it can run 130 150 180 yards um, a bear typically won't do that because a bear is not a 
a prey species. It's a predator. It's more it has a feeling, I guess, of in control of being in control of its surroundings, for lack of a better way to put it. A bear will typically run maybe 30 yards and, or just a few yards until it steps into thick cover and then stop and look around and uh, maybe try to analyze what just happened to it. Um, sometimes they will just they'll just run until they run out of gas, basically like the deer does, and that's typically 50 to 60 yards. But that is usually in very thick cover, and just because that bear is dead in 15 seconds and 60 yards away, that doesn't mean the recovery of it's going to be as easy as you might think. Bears have really thick fur, they have thick woolly under fur, and they have long guard hairs, and they typically have a lot of fat under the skin. And that can really clog up a wound and minimize your blood trail. That's the reason why you really want a low exit wound if you can get it. Now, a lot of deer hunters get really excited about these big expandable broadheads and mechanicals that make a huge hole in a deer, and they rave over how big of a hole it went and made. I'll tell you what, in bear hunting, this is really, really important. I'll take two small holes over one big hole any day. Just because you have a big hole doesn't mean you're going to find your bear because it might completely bleed out inside. If you have an exit wound, you got a much, much better chance of finding your bear because you're going to have a better blood trail. And that's especially true if you have a low exit wound, low on the body, meaning so you have an angle, which is why there's such an advantage to shooting bears from a tree stand and getting that low exit wound. So you want to have power to drive that arrow all the way through a bear. If you've got 75 to 95 pounds of kinetic energy, um, which is typically what today's modern compound bows are shooting at 300 feet per second, there's, you know, you're, you're in pretty good shape if you make a good shot and you get it through both lungs or the heart. Now, there was a day when a lot of outfitters wouldn't even allow expandable broadheads in their camp because they had so many bad experiences with them. Um, that has went away to a degree because uh, m most people are shooting bows that are capable of driving even expandable broadheads all the way through a bear now. But uh, I would really avoid shooting a bear from a ground blind um, with an expandable broadhead that that's one thing I would avoid and the other thing is shooting a bear from a ground blind or, or on the ground in you know a hiding situation um, you know boy you don't have much margin for error I wouldn't take a quartering away shot where you run the risk of your broadhead's going to hit the opposite shoulder or maybe an opposite leg um, you want to take a pure broadside shot that you can drive that arrow all the way through both lungs and and get an exit wound which will increase your odds of finding that bear and like I said at the beginning of this, I think it's really important that we strive for humane kills, of course. And the other aspect of this is, you know, if if you walk up on a wounded deer uh, following a blood trail, you might have to make a follow-up shot. But if you walk up on a wounded bear while you're following a blood trail, it might ruin your day. So there's pretty important parts of making sure that you get a quick, clean kill. And I've seen bears that went down really hard. Um, it's not uncommon for a bear to just run 20 yards or so, and uh, they don't, you know, they don't really know what happens. A, a good sharp fixed blade broadhead zips through them so fast they're not even sure that they're hit, and um, they might run 20 yards and just start walking. And I've had them walk a long ways, and and this, particularly the big bears in, in particular, I shot a 500 pounder that walked over 200 yards, and um, you know we were pretty fortunate to find it because it wasn't a great blood trail, but. Uh, it was good enough, and that bear had an arrow through both lungs, and even and the broadhead even nicked its heart. So um, they can do that. The big ones go down really, really hard, and uh, so keep this. You know, this is just all information to keep in mind that will help you choose the right broadhead, the right bow, and the right setup, and understand the value of taking the right shot angle. You know, a bear can contort itself in a lot of different ways that a deer doesn't. Um, realistically you know you, you might see in a bear in a dozen different positions you know they can kind of curl their body towards you and like a kind of almost a C which is a bad shot angle you you might see them standing up or um, up on top of a log or a barrel or something like that you might see them laying down um, you know they're they can sit down there's all kinds of different ways that uh, 
you're going to see a bear, and so you got to be patient. And that's one of the great advantages of using baits for black bears is that you have time to wait for the right shot angle where you're going to get a quick, clean, humane kill and a really good chance of recovering your bear. And fortunately, um, you know, if you wait for the right angle, your chances of uh, recovering that bear are close to 100%. But um, like I said, there's just a lot of reasons why you don't want to screw up. So uh, one other thing that I want to point out um, before I close here, uh, I've had a lot of people when I do bear hunting seminars, a lot of people ask, um, should I shoot the bear in the middle? Now I mentioned that the bear's vitals are a little bit farther back and a little lower than they are on a whitetail. Um, and if you shoot the bear right in the middle, and you, you can watch this video right here, and you can see that that arrow went right through the middle of the bear, and that bear ran 40, 50 yards and tipped over. And, uh, you know, that's what we all like to see. But should you shoot for the middle, that's a completely different issue entirely, and here's why. Um, if, if you shoot in the middle of the bear, and, and people talk about the middle of the middle, well, if you shoot in the middle of the middle of the bear, you're probably going to kill that bear, but if you're, say, four inches off, um, you're probably going to gut shoot that bear. So I prefer to shoot at the ribs and just try to make a double lung shot. And if you're four inches off, then you still shoot the bear in the middle and you kill the bear. So, you know, don't put yourself in a position where there's no margin for error. So anyway, these, that's my thoughts on this after having uh, been involved in bear hunting for 20 years and, and uh, archery, 28 archery bear kills and being around so many other um, archery bear, bear kills and your mileage may vary I guess you could say you uh, if you have uh, an opinion that differs from this or if you think of something that you would want to add to this just drop it in the comments below um, I uh, encourage uh, positive comments and constructive criticism and I'm fine with disagreement there's no problem there I don't know it all but I'm learning as I go and if you've got something you want to add to this please do and also hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. Thanks for so much for being a part of this channel.